Thank you for having me. Elizabeth, let's deal with the humanitarian crisis within Ukraine first. Tell us what the World Food Programme is doing on the ground there at the moment. Of course. So you very clearly explained in your introduction, you know, that we're deeply concerned about um, the reports that we have of food shortages um, and also shortages of drinking water in in the areas of the country that are in the at the heart of this conflict. And you mentioned Mariupol and Kharkiv and Kyiv. And so, you know, what we're hearing is that, you know, families in those embattled areas of Ukraine are really having um, problems finding food. Um, and we know that, you know, the food systems and all of the infrastructure inside of Ukraine um, in, in the conflict areas, you know, that are needed to feed the population, the roads, the supermarkets, the warehouses and the bridges and all of that infrastructure is, of course, falling apart. So we're deeply concerned. Um, and at the World Food Programme, we've launched an emergency response to feed um, more than three million people affected by this conflict. So those are the people who are trapped in major cities, as well as the displaced people around the country. And... In your capacity at the UN's food, World Food Programme, are you able to help those people or are you hampered by the fact that, for example, the people in Mariupol haven't been able to get any stuff in or out of the city now for, for the last three weeks? Well, of course, there are huge challenges um, in terms of security and accessing people. But, um, you know, the World Food Programme has set up bases in, in three cities inside of the country and also in um, neighbouring countries in Poland and in Romania uh, to set up fleets of trucks that are sending humanitarian uh, convoys into uh, into conflict areas. I mean, it's a, it's a huge operation. Uh, we're looking at hundreds of trucks every day uh, to reach people in need, um, you know, distributing high energy biscuits, wheat, um, bread um, and whilst we're gearing up to reach three, more than three million people so far, um, we've managed to assist more than 330,000 people. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's increasing every day. Um, and, and one thing that I also wanted to mention is, you know, where we can, in other words, where foods, food markets are functioning, where shops are functioning, what the World Food Programme is doing is working um, with those small businesses, in other words, giving cash or vouchers to people so that they can go and buy the food. And that really keeps helps to keep the economy going as much as possible. So the strategy is to provide food in kind, but also cash and vouchers to people. Elizabeth, let's look at the impact the war is going to have on global food supplies and prices. What can you tell us in your capacity as the UN's World Food Programme? Yes, yeah, so uh, you know we can see that this the impact of this war is going way beyond Ukraine, and it's it's affecting uh, global hunger. And we expect global hunger to increase at a time when it was already at an all time high. So very concerning. It's about um, food and fuel prices having increased sharply since the onset of the conflict, and we know that this is having an impact on the world's um, you know, most fragile countries and, and people who, who are already food insecure are going to feel the brunt of this. So um, I think you already mentioned in your introduction, but you know, Ukraine and Russia you know, account for 30% of global exports of wheat, 20% of global exports of maize, and 76% of some flour supplies. Um, and that means you know, that not the prices have gone up and also um you know exports have been disrupted and that's having huge implications for countries that rely on grain imports from russia and ukraine so you know lebanon imports more than 50 percent of its wheat from ukraine yemen uh, which has its own massive problems right now 22 percent tunisia 42 percent so you can see that this is going to have um, a, a very worrying impact um, at a time when, uh, you know, we can we already know that 44 million people globally are on the brink of famine. In fact, that figure was before the Ukraine war broke out. Yeah, I've been seeing here that Egypt also is, is a high importer. 70 percent of its total wheat imports are from Russia and Ukraine. Yeah. And of course, right. that impact is not going to be felt straight away because from what I understand, a lot of the wheat exports happened in February. So a lot of that grain left 
uh, Ukraine just before the war started. But of course, the impact is going to be in the next harvest because farmers have not been out planting the, the summer harvest. Uh, all the, the, the future harvests are going to be impacted. So if we're going to see that impact and the, the price rises, when do you think we'll, we'll actually start feeling it? And are we going to start feeling it here in the UK as well? Well, as you said, there's likely to be a small uh, lag time, a delay, um, but it's almost certainly that that those countries are going to suffer. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, it's really the countries that have the highest rates of food insecurity that are going to suffer, and, and that's going to push hunger up. Um, one other thing to mention just quickly is that these um, food and oil price hikes are also increasing the costs of the World Food Programme's operations. I mean, that's driving up um, WFP's monthly operational costs by up to $71 million a month. Sure. That's absolutely huge, um, huge. And that means that, you know, effectively, uh, that's reducing our ability to serve those in need right now when the world faces a year of unprecedented hunger. So, you know, the, the amount of funding that we need keeps rising. Um, and and so this is putting massive pressure on, on uh, not just, you know, it's not just through the commercial channels, but also through the aid channels like the World Food Programme. And Elizabeth, I've also been reading that uh, not just it's not just we're not just looking at wheat and sunflower, but half the world uh, population gets good food results as a result of fertilizers. Now, Russia uh, is one of the biggest producers of fertilizers. And if that's removed, there are uh, people saying that the, the yield of crops could drop by 50 percent. So farmers around the globe may be affected by what's going on in Russia and Ukraine at the moment. Yes, absolutely. Um, the issue of fertilizer and the price increases and the redu redu reduction in supply is is absolutely critical. And we're hearing, you know, from the FAO, um, our sister UN agency working on the production side, that uh, this is another huge risk to farmers around the world. Absolutely. There's a lot to be concerned about. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth, are we going to see an impact on food prices and supplies here in the UK? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I'm not sure I can I can speak to that at this point. Um, but I think you know, given that the price of food internationally and the price of oil is going up, we can expect um, that to have an, an upward pressure on on prices across the board. So quite possibly, Alexis. Okay, uh, Elizabeth, for thank you so much uh, for giving us your time this afternoon. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye bye.
So you can see that this is going to have um, a, a very worrying impact um, at a time when, uh, you know, we can we already know that 44 million people globally are on the brink of famine. Uh, you know, we can see that this the impact of this war is going way beyond Ukraine, and it's it's affecting. Uh, global hunger, and we expect global hunger to increase at a time when it was already at an all-time high. So very concerning. It's about um, food and fuel prices having increased sharply since the onset of the conflict. And we know that this is having an impact on the world's um, you know, most fragile countries and, and people who, who are already food insecure are going to feel the brunt of this. So um, I think you already mentioned in your introduction, but you know, Ukraine and Russia you know, account for 30% of global exports of wheat, 20% of global exports of maize, and 76% of some flour supplies. Um, and that means, you know, that not the prices have gone up and also, um, you know, exports have been disrupted. And that's having huge implications for countries that rely on grain imports from Russia and Ukraine. So, you know, Lebanon imports more than 50% of its wheat from Ukraine. Yemen, uh, which has its own massive problems right now, 22%. Tunisia, 42%. So you can see that this is going to have um, a, a very worrying impact um, at a time when, uh, you know, we can we already know that 44 million people globally are on the brink of famine. In fact, that figure was before the Ukraine war broke out. Yeah, I've been seeing here that Egypt also is is a high importer. Seventy percent of its total wheat imports are from Russia and Ukraine. Yeah. And of course, that impact is not going to be felt straight away because from what I understand, a lot of the wheat exports happened in February. So a lot of that grain left uh, Ukraine just before the war started. But of course, the impact is going to be in the next harvest because farmers have not been out planting the, the summer harvest. Uh, all the, the, the future harvests are going to be impacted. So if we're going to see that impact and the, the price rises, when do you think we'll, we'll actually start feeling it? And are we going to start feeling it here in the UK as well? Well, as you said, the, there's likely to be a small uh, lag time, a delay. Um, but it's almost certainly that that those countries are going to suffer. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, it's really the countries that have the highest rates of food insecurity that are going to suffer, and, and that's going to push hunger up. Um, one other thing to mention just quickly is that these um, food and oil price hikes are also increasing the costs of the World Food Programme's operations. I mean, that's driving up um, WFP's monthly operational costs by up to $71 million a month. Sure. That's absolutely huge, um, huge. And that means that, you know, effectively, uh, that's reducing our ability to serve those in need right now when the world faces a year of unprecedented hunger. So, you know, the, the amount of funding that we need keeps rising. Um, and and so this is putting massive pressure on, on uh, not just, you know, it's not just through the commercial channels, but also through the aid channels like the World Food Programme. <laughs>